fellow artists, it's Jess again and I'm back with a new tutorial for you um, using my watercolour technique in Photoshop CC. Um, today I thought I would do a little demonstration on how you can colour in um, one of your drawings. This time I chose um, a mermaid that I did. I drew this um, with pencil and paper and then I scanned it into my computer and now I'm going to turn it into a digital piece of art. Um, right here. Okay, so this is a drawing I did. I'm going to take this uh, little mermaid here on the left, uh, grab the lasso tool. Oh, where did it go? Um, you're going to grab it like this and go all the way around. doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so once you've selected your drawing, just Command C, which is to copy it. Go up to File, New, and we're going to change this into inches. The width I'm going to say 8, height 8, must be at least 300 pixels per inch, which is great, that's a good resolution. Color mode I change to CMYK and OK. Alright, so new piece of paper. Now, um, if you've seen my other videos before, you'll already know this technique, but I'm just going to quickly do it now. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to go down here to this folder looking icon and it's called create a new group. So you've created a group, now you're going to go over here to this icon which is to add um, a layer mask, press that, go up to edit and you're going to fill it. You're going to fill it with a pattern, okay? If you haven't done this before, you'll need to go down into Custom Pattern and uh, Photoshop CC comes with certain patterns already loaded. It won't have the one that I'm using, so you'll need to go over here to this little whirly gig, press that, go down to Artist Surfaces and you just press Append and it will add these surfaces which are a whole bunch of different textures that uh, mimic real artist tools. So the one I like to use is the second from the end, if I hover that gauche light on watercolour. So we're basically colouring on a watercolour paper. Press that, hit OK. Now you see it turned the box grey. I'm going to go to Command L, which is your levels, and move this white arrow all the way into the middle of the graph, of the black graph. And as you can see, it turned your box white. Okay, now let's add our first layer. And then I want you to change it from normal to multiply. Okay, this is gonna be your drawing layer. I separate my layers to make things easy. And uh, we will Command C this again in case I forgot. And Command V, which pastes your picture. Now I'm gonna make her a little bit bigger. Hold down the shift and the option key and it'll keep it in the center of your page and it won't change, it, you'll be able to change the size of your image without distorting the shape. That's pretty good, okay. Now I've got this dirty paper mark around it. I wanna clean that up and only see the pencil marks. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to Command L again, back to the levels. Click on the white eyedropper tool and click on the lightest part of the drawing. Boom. Took that away and cleaned it up nicely. Okay, I'm going to rename this drawing. Then we're going to add another layer. It's going to be above drawing. Also change that to multiply. This is going to be our color layer. This is where we're going to do all of our beautiful watercolor um, painting. Okay, I'm just going to, for me, this is messing with me a bit. I want her a bit more in the center. There we go. <laughs> That's better. Okay, back to colour. Now, I usually start with my um, my characters. I start with the skin tones first and I always start with the lightest and then add the colour on top. So um, go to paintbrush. I use one type of paintbrush which is a watercolour brush that you can download and I will give you the link to that. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I don't mess with a bunch of different brushes, it's just a waste of time and it messes with your artistic flow. Down to the colour picker and we'll choose maybe our skin tone and we'll give her start here. And uh, go ahead and 
I like to leave a little white on the edge and then start putting in a bit of color. Okay. And as you can see, that did one color and I, I held my um, digital pen down and I didn't lift it because it would have changed um, the coloring on it. It would have made it darker and spotchy. So that's why you can layer over it with the exact same color. I haven't changed it. It's just, as you can see, it's adding color on top. So it really does feel like a real watercolor painting, just like you would if you were actually painting. Okay. My light source is clearly coming from the left, so I've got some light here. Um, something I've been quite big into lately is doing some different colors for shadow, like a bit of blue. Smaller. So in the shadows, I've been adding not the same skin tone, but actually a different color. So I'm just adding a few, some shadows. I'm just going over the top of it, same color, over and over. Kind of cool. Maybe a little bit more purplish. Add a few white in there in the creases. Okay. Okay. She looks a bit pale, so let's give her a bit. Brush a bit bigger. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. And I'm going to give her a little bit of uh, rosy cheeks, so go down to her orangey red. Pretty light still. All watercolor, you really want to keep it pretty light. That's nice, but I want it a bit pinkier. Maybe a little bit more pink. There we go. And don't worry if it looks blotchy right now, that's fine because we're going to um, blend it in a bit. Okay, now she's a mermaid, so obviously she could have some super cool colored hair. So let's see, uh, I'm just going to show you how we can blend this now. Let's go with uh, a little bit of yellow first. Mm -hmm. This is really rough, just to kind of show you how I color. Um, now I'm going to go back to the blend brush and just make it a little bit smaller. And go around in those colors back in the yellow a bit. There we go. So many colors. <laughs> it's fun though. And then when you're done with that, I never really worry about you know going over the lines. You can go back and clean it up, erase it a little, remove the bits that you didn't like. Okay. Give her that pink on her necklace. Okay. Now I'm just going to go back and 
this is my color picker and you find the colors I used before, which usually when I use this technique, when you pick on a color, for some reason it makes it darker than what it really is. So I always go a bit lighter. I just want to get a few spots that need a bit more color. So just fill them in. You can also go over the top of colors because it will change them and it works exactly the same way color wheel works so if you put some uh, blue over the top of yellow you're going to get green um, that's okay and that i'm going to blend it again just a little bit Look. Yeah, it should be cute. Okay, now um, I like to outline it. And I usually outline in a grayish brown to make it easy and natural pencil. So basically, I like to hit all the eyes and everything. I usually do it around 12, the size of the brush. Zoom in nice and close. And here's where I'm probably going to speed this up again. Okay. Okay, I think that will do for now. I'm just going to go in now and I like to, after I've done my outline in the pen, I like to go in and clean up the pencil marks. So I'm back onto drawing in here. I'm going to make my eraser a bit smaller. I'm just going to clean up a few bits. Just anywhere that the pencil will if I see it too much. I don't get rid of the pencil drawing because I like it, but I don't want to have, you know, I just like to clean up the image in there. Have a look at her. Yeah, she's pretty cute, huh? Anyway, that's, uh, that's basically how I do my coloring. And uh, that was just to give you a quick example. This is just done pretty messy. I would have spent a lot more time normally, but um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and um, go start this technique yourself and I'd love to see what you come up with. Okay, have a great day.